Why, hello, my wonderful zookeepers. So good to see you here again. I hope that you are ready for a very wonderful day working here in our zoo because I have some amazing new things to show you guys, like our fantastic new flamingo exhibit. <gasps> and Queen Blush has just had offspring. What? What? Oh my gosh, our gold flamingos are already having babies like that quickly. I cannot believe this. This is so exciting. And Bianca, the bird eater, has had offspring and an animal died? Why did why did you die of dehydration? There's literally one, two. It, I don't understand what's going on with our Japanese macaques lately. I really don't understand what's going on with our Japanese macaques lately. I am so sorry that you guys had to see yet another terrible thing happening. Uh, and Reserve should be okay. Reserve just needs to like scooch over a little bit. His stress will go down in just a second now that he's in his private area. Uh, but yeah, it's been a little bit chaotic here, guys. But don't fret because I have been able to make some amazing things happen. Let us get these donation boxes all over the top area too because our new area for the golden flamingos has been greatly enhanced by the arrival of this super awesome flamingo bridge look at this isn't this so cool people apparently have a great view of the flamingos from up here they really like it let's we're gonna we're not going light on the donation boxes anymore. We're doing an experiment where we are literally lining the path into the zoo with donation boxes, with actual paths. Uh, people apparently really, 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 really love this and they're tossing some money in, which makes me happy. Oh my gosh, do they love it so much that I need to make this bigger? It can't be, well, maybe it can be bigger in the middle here. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, I didn't expect them to love it so much that we might actually need to like come in and make it larger, but it looks like we might need to come in and replace some of it to make it larger. We'll let that kind of fan out and see what happens. But yes, so what we actually have been working on over here, staff alerts, forge feeding pool cannot be reached. Oh, um, can I move it over here then? Yes, I could move it over here. We're gonna move it over there. Call keeper to habitat, there we go. But we have set up this beautiful new bridge. I really, really love it. I've even added in where we're going to be putting our golden pangolin so we can try to start breeding for a better pangolin. There are so many new donation benches and, or donation spots and it seems to be really helping because a lot of these have already gotten, oh, okay, nothing on that one, 100 on that one, 700 on that one, 600 on this one, 160 on this one, yeah, a lot of these are already seeing like a lot of attention as groups of people go by. An animal has escaped. <gasps> when did we have this baby? What the heck? Oh my gosh, we have a baby Okapi and I didn't even notice. What on earth? I, I am so freaking excited about that. Let's go ahead and get the baby back where he belongs. I can't believe it. it's a gold level female. <gasps> That's so exciting. Also, we've reduced crime here apparently. Yay. Okay, um, can we cancel that move and then move her over here? Okay, the baby is stuck in a cave. We will check out the baby when we get her not stuck in a cave. This has been amazing. What a day. But this is the new golden flamingo pool. I'm actually gonna go ahead and pause because so much has happened in like two minutes. So I can catch all of you wonderful, wonderful zookeepers up on the work that we are doing over here. So I went ahead and I everyone was saying that they couldn't see the flamingos very well. So I realized people really, really seem to love when they're up, when they're up and they can actually look over an exhibit. So I thought, why not go ahead and make a bridge then? So we did, we went ahead and we made a bridge so people can walk up here. I put down some custom rock cladding so that they can just have the bridge supported by that. We have this really nifty little set of stairs that comes up down this side and will lead you and dump you out right over either to pandas or okapi, depending on what you would like to follow up on. And then I wrapped it around over here. We're gonna like replace a lot of these things, by the way. But I wrapped it around over here so that people could also come and see the flamingos and the pygmy hippotamus that we are going to be adopting from this side if they wanted to do that instead. So that's kind of my plan. 
this is going to become the golden pangolin pavilion so we are actually going to really retrofit this to be super fancy and to have gold level pangolin in here so that we can try to breed very very healthy ones there too and I think having gold level flamingos has already resulted in getting a lot of donations, but we're, go oh my gosh, over a thousand donations so far. Yes. But we're going to experiment with this because I think how well educated your guests are to this area actually has a huge impact on how much they donate. So we're going to try an experiment of adding in a ton of educational pieces along here so that our guest will hopefully become even more educated. I think they have, like, that's the information. I'm not sure exactly where, like, you would think that the education would be stored in the guest facilities, but it is not. There's, like, conservation boards we can put up. Uh, there's the educational speakers. And the more we can give these people to become educated, then the more they will actually donate from the sounds of it. Uh, I also like this Tibetan education speaker because that looks so much like the one that we use for our Asian section. Uh, but I like my I like my personal one that I made a little bit more. This animal info wall right here. Nice. See, isn't it pretty? So we could at least put that down. Uh, but I feel like it's a little out of place if it's not in the Asian section of the zoo. I will admit that. Uh, maybe we should just go with a basic education station. But that's so basic. And I want it to be fancy. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's start with maybe some habitat. Just a basic habitat stand. Maybe a basic habitat stand is a good place to start. So that people can just get some of the basics about the flamingos, but that is really boring. Hmm. And the path is not very big, so we do want to be careful about that. That That is where board logs. Oh, that's what you could like put it on. I gotcha. I gotcha. I guess one of the perks of having the education board look like this is that it's not very big, so people would still be able to see the flamingos. But I like things being a little fancier than that. Oh, and this actually has a speaker in it as well. <gasps> okay, that's kind of cool. We could go ahead and try to, like, move this one up. And then flip it around so that it's not in people's way. That is kind of cool. I think we could actually edit this to kind of blend in a little bit better. But this, this will work. This will actually do really well to talk about the greater flamingo. And if I could, oh my gosh, it's upside down. <laughs> Does that matter if it's like upside down? Let's flip it right side up. There we go. And then can I reach the speaker that's inside? Almost. There we go. And we can turn up the volume so that more people can hear. Oh, look at that. And this way, everybody over here can hear about the flamingos. Nice. I actually kind of like that. But just that one right over there. And then we can put ours, the one that I made, right down here. And down we go. Let's line this sucker up. And we can even turn it a little bit. And then I could even get rid of the ferns or some features of it, but it just looks so much nicer. And we can go ahead and remove that. And then let's move. Okay, that's a good donation box, so we'll leave that be. We can put that there. Okay, we'll, we will definitely spruce this up as time goes on, but I think that this is a very good thing to experiment with. So if we add in a ton of these education speakers, if we really start aggressively decorating with them and using them, can we make a difference for how much people donate over here? I think that'd be really, really good to find out. So can we like add in speakers sort of like under where people are? And then scooch it over and up a little bit. And apparently it's really important that you don't have these speakers overlap. So what if we put the speaker kind of in the ground a little? And yeah, I don't know why, but it's really important that you don't have them overlap, apparently. 
Whoa, what the heck? That's not what I signed up for. In fact, I think we might have to go ahead and if we want to do it like this, lift it up, put it there, grab it, this educational speaker. These people are going to be so well educated about flamingos that they are going to be flummoxed. They're going to be completely flummoxed by flamingos. They will have no idea like, how did I ever learn so much about flamingos? It was like a little voice was speaking to me. Boom. And then you want to come over and you don't want it to overlap or else people get cranky. Is this now about flamingos? It is not about flamingos, but there we go. We'll drop it just into the ground there. Oh, this is so exciting. I love teaching people. So whoops, that actually overlapped a little bit. I really, really love teaching people. Like clearly, <laughs> if you guys are here, you're a part of the pixel biology community and part of my never ending desire to spread awareness, education, and love of the natural world to everyone I can get my hands on. So we're just going to surround these people with it, which is, you know, if it was me, I would be like, I just want to look at the flamingos in peace. But I know a lot about flamingos, like the shrimp that they eat and the way that they build the most adorable little nest. Oh my gosh. All right. So there's that. How is the education look over here? Look at that. Now we're like, boom, 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 boom. Take that, friends. Is there a second? There is actually a second habitat board that they built into the back that we can get rid of. Nice! Okay, let's do that experiment and see what happens if we have now cranked up to like the nth degree all of these little educational speakers. These people cannot walk past it without learning more. And then at each of the top spots, we'll add in, like at each of these spots, we'll go ahead and add in another educational like conservation board so that people will become educated about that on their way past we'll add in one down here too so they can't get past us over here without learning something more what will we teach them here let's teach them about poaching in the land sharing versus land sparing there uh and then over here we'll come and teach them about um deforestation and over here we'll come and teach people about ecotourism so we're like going all freaking out on trying to make this happen uh we may need to make a bigger path because these people moving as groups are kind of in the way of things however we'll see if all of that can improve donations because that is what we are after drop in those donos friends the zoo ticket price is good. Okay, so so far these new people are pretty happy and their education is slowly going up. That's what we want. Oh, he's got a lot of money we need to get. Hmm. Hmm. We will figure out how to get this group's money for sure. They, so they come in groups and they all have cash and we need to drain their cash. That is the goal, friends. Uh, also, note to self, might need to make this bridge bigger. However, let's celebrate this new area with a new animal. That is something else. I really, the animal has escaped. Please call the vet. She has once again swum off. I think she will come back on her own. Come on, little one. You are being so adorably naughty. No more of that, okay. What an adorable baby Okapi. I adore her. Now she can't get back there anymore, I'm pretty sure. So hopefully she'll behave herself. <gasps> Rhea, that's just... <gasps> There's so much stuff happening. Oh my gosh. Rhea has just had another litter of puppies. What the heck? <gasps> How many? One, two, three. We have another triplet litter of puppies, you guys. Holy cow. And Hugh Hugh, the panda, is about to die of old age. Hugh Hugh! Oh my gracious, we have now bred some animals. George the Goliath bird eater has low welfare. We have a whole bunch of thirsty Galapagos tortoises because they can only go so fast. <laughs> I will take care of our Galapagos tortoises. I promise they really do need some TLC. But Hugh Hugh the panda is about to die of old age. Oh, you guys, Hugh Hugh. 21 years he has been with us. 
Oh. Rest in peace, little one. And that reminds me, I do want to move ZZ so that she'll actually go and have offspring with at at so i should probably move them you you rest in pandemonium my little friend all right you guys know what we need to do now and also i i have no idea why guests won't come down here this is so ridiculous i think that's it i'm gonna make i'm gonna make the gondola or i'm gonna make like uh, at least at least you know what i'm i'm so done with them not looking at these pandas. We have a wonderful selection of fantastic pandas that nobody just seems to want to give the freaking time of day. And if all these people really want are better views and they demand that the better views mean up, then I will give them up. Come forth then, people. Go up and look at my pandas for crying out loud. <laughs> like, I don't even need to connect the staff path right now. That's fine, we'll fix that later. But come and freaking look at my pandas then, you, you silly nillies. There's so many great pandas over here and you people just don't even give them the freaking time of day. Uh, I do wanna have a cool monorail back here at some point. So people can like look down from the monorail and they can see pandas. So, or a gondola, I mean. So maybe we'll have the transport gondola like start over here and go over there. That will be a project for another day though. So hue hue. Lily, at at, ja ja, ha ha. Hue hue. Oh hue hue. I want to give Hugh Hugh a little bowl of, of food too. So let's come on in and remember Hugh Hugh, who has been with us for quite some time. 20 years we were together with that panda. That is something extremely special. Let's go ahead. We'll get a little basket maybe. How about, oh, oh a little water basin. You know what? I love that. We're going to get a little water basin and put it in front of Hugh Hugh, who has seen so much, who has been with us for so long. There. All right. And I think I can actually even make this more special by coming over to the special effects. No puns intended there. Falling blossoms, dandelion seeds, falling leaves, a little jet. There's all sorts of water effects, mist. Let's have water jet, water splash, just a small little water splash. Just coming right out of there. Oh my gosh, that's a much bigger water splash than I meant. But we'll imagine that it's just the bowl runneth over, I suppose. Uh, actually better without the water splash, so we'll leave this be. Oh, and rest in peace, Hugh Hugh. But I'm really glad you were part of our family for so long. All right, meanwhile, down here, super proud about what the flamingos are doing. There's apparently protesters at our zoo now. Unfortunately, the first couple births of the babies are not very high in our hopes of being good matches of having quarantined so many gold level flamingos. I worry that we may actually have a few related flamingos who are trying to breed with one another and we might definitely need to handle that uh, very, very carefully. Also, I don't think our flamingos can actually come down to get a drink. So let's be absolutely sure to smooth this path out. Like, okay, yeah, there's no way they can come get a drink from over here. What the heck? You guys. Okay, that was an unattended pull, maybe? Is it because of this thing? I feel like it's because of this thing. <laughs> no joke, I, I think that, that that enrichment item, and I think this flamingo is actually trapped. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my goodness gracious, guys. Sometimes you just never know the way that the world is going to work. Uh, let's actually take the water out for a second then. 
And now we can come on in. All right, and I wanted to add the pygmy hippopotamus today into this exhibit, but it's a good thing that we noticed that, oh, by the way, this exhibit was a little bit, a little bit chaotic. It needed to be smoothed out in several spots so that the animals could get down into the water because that would be terrible if our poor pygmy hippos couldn't manage to get into and out of the water. Fun fact, pygmy hippos actually don't like to spend as much time in the water as you would think because they are not like other hippopotamus that do spend a lot of time in the water. There we go. That should be a gentle enough slope that they should be able to get down in here. But if not, we can reassess again. And if that's not enough water, we can add in more water over here, especially. Um, so we'll see how that works out. But just in case, let's go ahead and add in some water for these guys. Because I hate, hate, hate when the tragic, tragic things happen and we lose. In fact, I think I have a cute little water fountain I want to use. Where's my, there it is, my cute little drinking fountain. Let's add this in because it's just adorable and I love it. Can I put this down? Yeah, right like that. Okay, that took away my cliff. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right, let's try again. Cute little water fountain. There we go. Let's add it over here. There, that's adorable. All right, but yeah, our breeding experiment with the flamingos, not really putting off the results I was hoping for just yet, but I'm sure it'll get there. And there's a lot of people. Oh, look at the donations. Yes. Maybe this was the key! Just making sure that people are well freaking educated about these flamingos at every step. So that might have been the key. Also, I think the other key is that we're going to need a land bridge. <laughs> now that I'm looking at it, I think we need a land bridge <laughs> to connect up that side of the flamingo habitat to this side of the flamingo habitat. Um, ooh, and let's use this one! The land bridge we were already working on. That actually sounds fantastic. What a way to spend our zookeeping days, friends. Oh, and then people can be eye level with the flamingos for a minute. This is so cool. Day after day, a little at a time, and often with ridiculous results, we are having more and more amazing discoveries. Look at this, and then we can have the flamingos come and hang out over here. That's so fine. Then we'll come down and push this away. All right. And now we can afford to make this a little deeper, I think. And then smooth this out a little bit more. All right, here's hoping that'll work. <laughs> Water? Water? Oh no, okay, and now we need to find a way, I think because our, our flamingos actually got in the way. Let's go ahead and move you. Like so, and I think now, oh and look at the other flamingo, like finally! I'm free! <laughs> okay, and we will figure out how to add more water in for our flamingos over here next time with all of this silly, silly chaos. So, all right, guys, I'm going to fiddle with this because this definitely is my fault for playing with very roughly with the land bridge. Can I get more water now? <laughs> ah! <laughs> but we will get there eventually. And thank you guys so much for joining me. So if you guys could, do please leave a like for our wonderful new flamingo bridge. I promise the flamingos will have water again soon. And now our experiments at seeing if adding in more education is going to help really ramp freaking up the donations that our guests will be tossing in. I think it'll probably work. We will just have to see. And next time, for sure, I'm going to be getting all of those pygmy hippos, and it's going to be amazing. So I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.